Jordan Nixon, CHSAAA Borough, City, and State Champion, McDonald's All-American and Notre Dame signee, 2020-2021 SEC Regular Season Champion, graduate of Texas A&M back in December of 2021, who is now currently pursuing her master's in communications, Shake, to now New York Tough. Welcome to the show. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm like really good. These last, this summer has been eye-opening in so many ways, and we'll kind of get into that later, but I've been spending a lot of time just rewiring my brain I feel like um and that sounds like this lofty thing but it, it it really isn't it's just been a lot of like a string of little things that I've done that I've changed that I've kind of played around with um you can't expect different results if you're you're the same person I feel like I've grown a lot in the you know in the last few few months like I said but you know dealing with the injury and the rehab which we'll also talk about but I'm just really good. I feel like this is the busiest I've I've ever been, <laughs> but in the best way. So I think the biggest, this is a long answer to how are you, but I'm just, I'm happy. I feel aligned, body, mind, spirit. So I can't ask for anything more. That's actually where I want to start. So last season, you didn't look how you do now. Uh, I would imagine, I mean, the season ended back in March. It is now August. What have been some of the most notable changes in you since that time? So the most notable changes, I mean, starting with what I said before about being busy, like I've been so productive in using my time efficiently. Um, last season, I, I practically lived in the training room and Katie, Chloe, like, you know, my people, they looked out for me, they made sure I was good. And then, but I mean, I, sp I spent so much time telling myself stories about who I am and who I wasn't. Um, I say that to say, if you're constantly telling yourself, I'm not this way, or you know, I would say to myself, like, Jordan Nixon is dead. Jordan Nixon isn't this anymore. She can't be. She's on one leg. Like, there was so much of that just echoing in my head, playing all day, all night. And, I mean, at times it was just louder. And I, I, didn't, I didn't quiet those voices. So when I said before about, like, rewiring my brain, I'm changing those stories completely. Like, I am who I am, whether I feel like it or not. That's just... That's just where I am. And that's one of the things that I read to myself every morning. I've become a proponent <laughs> of affirmations. I always felt kind of funky about them, I guess, just because if it's a general affirmation, like I am beautiful, if you think you're already beautiful, like, okay, maybe you need that affirmation, but it's not gonna hit the same as someone who doesn't feel as beautiful inside or outside. And they're saying that to themselves every morning changing the narrative in their head about who they are, who they could be, who they will be, all those things. So basically to go back to the season, I, the, one of the most notable changes is, is literally that the stories, the voice in my head are saying to me over and over, but also just having space, like more capacity for more things. Like I talked about being busy, I've done more for a problem in NYT in the last month, in the last two months than I have in two years for a problem and then about a year for New York Tough. And I mean, I'm so grateful to be able to say that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm creative, my ideas are flowing. I'm like really honing in on who I am and what I want and what I want these brands to be. And I didn't have, I robbed myself of that luxury in the past because I'm, all this negativity is just permeating my brain, my body, my spirit. And I didn't, I, I couldn't do it before. I, again, robbed myself of that opportunity. So I'm just so glad that I'm in a place where I can enjoy the blessings around me, that I can people, be they people, little things like my apartment, the sunset, the pool across the street, like little stuff like that. But um, most notable changes include 
just those stories and um, just having a greater capacity that I can fill with things that'll benefit me and benefit others as well. So you're clearly walking now. Uh, what is this? What has this rehab process been like? Because it can be can be a grueling thing. Uh, coming back from knee surgery, having dealt with the injury for so long. I mean, I would imagine. You know, you've had your highs and lows, but I can you detail that experience for me a little bit? So if I'm thinking about the rehab process, I it brings me joy and pleasure in a weird way. And I say that to say March 24th, 2022, I had surgery on Tootsie. That's why I call my knee. Don't judge me, call it Tootsie. And that was actually the anniversary of Iowa State, right? The win to the second round win to carry us into the Sweet 16, 35 points, seven assists, um, game winner, tears, tears about being an Aggie and my teammates and coaching staff trusting me and you know all the things. And I was having surgery that very next year. In the day before that, Joni had actually been named head coach. So there was a lot going on. But when I think back to the early stages of the rehab process, I'm, I don't know, it's kind of funny, I guess, because I was given a scooter and the scooter went like four or five miles per hour. The first day I rode it, I'm like, I called Katie and I'm like, um, Katie, I think it's broken. It's not charged. Like something's wrong with it because why isn't it going any faster? So that was an adjustment. But the injury that I had, which was a partial meniscus tear, but cartilage that was damaged down to the bone, there was a slow rehab process. So I was non-weight bearing for like four to six weeks, which was non-weight bearing. I can't walk. Like I'm not, I'm not walking at all. Um, and then after that, it was like a slow and steady progression because they wanted to make sure it, it healed properly. So I'm on this scooter. I'm eating every four to six hours. And for people who know me, like I eat three meals a day, if that, right? But it's not even like a consistent three. I eat kind of when I'm hungry, it might be two. It, I try not to do one because, you know, did that in the past, it was not good. And training with Coach Joe, you need more than that. But <laughs> either way, it's like, so I'm, I'm eating more than I have what feels like ever, right? Eating so frequently. Um, so I'm constantly having to like pack myself snacks, right? Making food. My mom is my sous chef. Like she's in the in the kitchen making me smoothies for the week or, you know, sandwiches or dinner. Like I'm not walking around my house and I could, I mean, I could ride my scooter, but there's a lot going on with there. So with that, so I'm thankful to my mom because without her, I probably would have starved or been miserable. So I definitely appreciate her for that. But all in all, it was just, it was a lot. It was a lot to remember. Um, I can't tell you the amount of times that I left my crutches places. How do you leave crutches places and you need them? I don't know. Either way, we digress, we moved on from that. But it was a lot of moving and shaking that had to be done. And I'm somebody who's like big on routine. So I need my certain like I need a little bit more certainty from because my brain just goes all over the place. And because I'm constantly thinking of these, these little things that I didn't have to think about in the past, I'm forgetting everything. Like I thought rehab was one place. I got there early. Uh, Sherry calls me. She's like, um, are you? And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, right. Yeah, I'm here. You know, it's good. She's like, well, we're definitely somewhere else. Okay, right, right, Sherry, I'm on my way. Give me 20 minutes. <laughs> Even going to class, like it was such a, Texas A&M is not the most um, accessible campus. And so I've definitely bumped into a couple of doors, tried to dodge people's feet, all those things. But if I'm, so outside of the grind of rehabbing and remembering, rather remembering all the things around rehab, it was what it was, I got through it. But as far as being in rehab and actually seeing myself go through these progressions, because I'm always very um, aware in rehab. Like I'm not, I'm not somewhere else mentally. Like I was very focused on what it was that I was doing, whether it was activating my quad or um, you know, my eccentric movement or whatever it was. And I made it, I made it fun. Like Sherry, one of the biggest compliments she's ever given me 
She's giving me a lot of compliments, Sherry. Love me some Sherry. I call her sunshine. But she said that I'm everybody's like favorite rehabber, which is, it may not seem big for anybody who's not in rehab, but there are a lot of people that are in rehab. Like these are, these are all sports. <laughs> like, so for me to have such an impression on people and for them to remember me or love when I'm there and that, you know, tell me that I bring them joy or to see smiles on their faces when I'm asking them, you know, what their guilty pleasure snack is or, you know, sour or sweet or, you know, whatever, savory or sweet. Um, it really meant a lot, but I've, I've developed like friendships, real friendships in, in this time, um, in the PDC or in West campus. And honestly, rehab has been a bright spot in my day. Like, yeah, it's, it gets hard or it gets tiring or a little tedious because sometimes you do the same exercises over and over again, but I've, the people there have given me an opportunity to truly enjoy these last few months. And I'm still in rehab, so this is, you know, kind of an ongoing process for the time being. They're very thorough in what they do. So, I mean, more to come, I'm very, I'm very excited about it. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I love rehab. So the process has been, has been really good. <laughs> so coming back from an injury can be tough, as I said in the beginning. So I wanna ask, What's next? What is the what does the timetable look like for you in the next couple of couple of months? <sighs> so in the next few months, I've um I've actually decided to forego my eligibility. And most people are like, when I say that, like, why? That, and that's the the most mm, understated reaction. I've seen all kinds of faces. I've gotten all kinds of reactions, most of which have been positive. There has been a little bit of pushback, but for the most part, as I, most people are shocked at first, but then they're like, they hear that I'm still getting my master's. Hmm, okay. They realize that I'm still gonna be in College Station, still living in my apartment, still a part of the community, still building my legacy, as I you know, obviously explain more. And they're like, oh, well, you know, okay, like that's, that's great, that's good. And you know, all the things and I start to talk about, you know, my projects. So to answer your question, as far as what do these next few months look like, it look like me going to class. It looks like me continuing to build a problem in New York Tough. It looks like building this nonprofit with a couple of other student athletes uh, called Aggies R Us, or that's the, the temporary name. I'm hoping it's permanent because I, I really, really like it. But um, is basically a pipeline from the Texas A&M athletics community to the greater Bryan College Station area for um, kind of like Adidas gear or we, we get a lot of stuff, just stuff. And I say stuff because it's sometimes things you don't really need or like will never use or you have so much of it that you don't even touch it. You don't even take the tags off of it. So I, it started with me having a lot of shoes in my house and feeling like, man, like somebody else could use these shoes was maybe I don't like them or, you know, I'm not going to wear them because I have so many that I'm already, already using. I'm like, well, I'm sure my other teammates have these problems because we, I mean, we clean out our lockers. We, we talk about it together. So I'm like, okay, well, what if I can solve this problem? And that's exactly what I'm doing with this with this program. And I think it'll be really good. We've already gotten a lot of donations and we're getting them kind of day by day and just watching those donation boxes that we put around campus, watching them fill up has been been a pleasure. I always get really excited about it. <laughs> um, since Aggies Are Us, it's continuing to record for BTS and The Chosen. So The Chosen is the NYT storytelling interview platform that I started. I thought it was a nice addition because that's what I, I do. I tell stories um, and I build platforms for other people to tell their stories because stories have such a unique way of connecting us. You could think, you know, the person across, uh, you know, a person across the country is living a completely different life than you. They tell their story, you tell your story, and now you're like, we're the same. Like, we're not all that different. So it's a unique power to connect, but it's, as far as influencing people, you might be in a bad position. You have no answers. You hear somebody else's story and it may not directly align with yours, but you can glean something from it. You can, you know, maybe, maybe you found an answer or maybe you found 
an option, something that you haven't yet tried or thought about. So I feel like if I can kind of harness that magic, even just through a Zoom, you know, face call, I mean, Zoom face call, a Zoom video or, you know, whatever it is, I feel like I'm, I'm doing a really good thing. Um, and then BTS, obviously, Beneath the Surface, it was the idea that I had back in October 2021, and we made it a reality in November, 12th Man Productions. I've since claimed ownership of it, so it is completely my own. I do all the editing, all the producing, like everything is me, and so it's definitely a learning curve, but I'm a learner, so it's... I live for these kinds of things, uh, and I, I'm excited to see both of those grow. Um, I'm in the process of kind of building building my photography portfolio, and soon, hopefully, I'll be able to move into a, a full studio, kind of get get some things going there. I think I'm getting more well versed in what it takes to actually run a studio, what you need, how you can get it, where you can start. So. Obviously, there's a lot to figure out there, but I'm very excited about that. It's definitely, I'm definitely trying to manifest it, which is why I'm even talking about it now. I used to be so private about my my goals and my my fantasies, I guess, but um, you got to kind of put them out there. Cause I, you know, you ask not, you have not because you ask not. And you know, I pray about it a lot. I I talk about it. Um, I just I just try to put it out there. So hopefully it'll it'll come to fruition. But yeah, I mean, that's really that's really what these next few months look like, and, and they don't involve basketball, so that's definitely been a a change. But a large part of me even saying it on this in this way or on this platform is that I want to control that narrative. I didn't. It was my choice, completely, utterly my decision, and I'm so grateful to the people who who I've spoken to about it, um, as far as like administration, like Kristen Brown, Joe, um, Joni, like all of those people, they fully supported me. Um, I'm so thankful for them because it, it could have it could have gone sideways, <laughs> it could have gone elsewhere. They could have just said, well, you know, goodbye. You, you do, you know, you don't serve any purpose anymore. And I feel like Texas A&M is a community where I mean, it's home for me. I'm, I'm very much an Aggie, and I'm a proud Aggie. I wear this ring. I mean, yeah, it's shiny and cute, but it means something. It means everything to me, and uh, I'm just so glad that I have it. I'm so glad to be a part of a part of what's going on here, even if in a different capacity, I guess. Oh, and I, I can't forget the book, Coach Blair. All throughout last season, he would talk to me about writing a book, and to be perfectly honest, I started writing a book in April of 2021 because um, a guy by the name of Mephis Collins, he's on the board of the 12 Men Foundation, I think. If I get his title wrong, sorry, Mephis. But um, after I gave a keynote speech to the top, I mean, 500, I think, I don't know how many people are actually in the room, donors to Texas A&M Athletics, he was like, you need to write. I said, Malia, <laughs> Malia Johnson, she standing next to me because she came to support me and she's like, that's all she does. I'm like, don't tell my life. But <laughs> she's 100% correct in that I write all the time. And he was like, no, no, like for real, you need to write a book. I'm like, a book? So I said all that, but the whole time, fifth grade me, fifth grade Jordan is like, I want to write a book. Now, what I would have written about then, I cannot say. But um, yeah, I started it then and then I kind of put it aside, jumped back into it, put it aside. and. I finally feel like I'm in a place to manifest that manifest that reality, and I, I man, meaning actually bring it into fruition, right? Like write all the pages, do all the research, do this, do that. So uh, Coach Blair will be very happy to hear me say that, but I'm also proud to be saying it. I think I think it'll be really really good. Yeah. You're foregoing your eligibility. Two years. Two years left and you're foregoing it. A lot of things are swirling in my mind, but when did you come to that decision and how are you feeling about it? So <laughs> it's, it's a long story, but um, back, in, uh, back in September, I'm gonna take it back for a second. 
I stepped away from all basketball related activity. And that for me wasn't a hiatus of like, okay, I'm just gonna go live my life for this next, however, you know, this undisclosed amount of time. It wasn't a, let me go rendezvous. I got some things I wanna do. Like it wasn't that at all. I needed it because I wasn't okay. And September is, is National Suicide Awareness Month. And uh, I wrote it from a perspective of like having a sprained ankle because people will ask you what's wrong. And if you say, okay, I sprained my ankle, there are remedies for it. There's ice, there's this, there's, oh man, you know, that's a tough break. And people are like, well, how are you? How are you feeling? Where's your head space? You know, where, where are you mentally and all those things. But if you tell them that you have an injury that you can't see, you have anxiety, you have depression, you have these things that are impairing your function, but they can't see them. It changes how they're weighed, how they're, nobody, like, if you say you have anxiety, sure, some people might, but you have to be, if you don't also have anxiety, it's kind of like, okay, well, well, get your mind right and do this and do that. But the people who know, know. So I, I say all that to say, when I made that decision, the decision to actually forego my eligibility, because I had been thinking about it prior to then, when I made the decision, it was probably early May. And I didn't, I didn't start by asking permission. I was sitting down looking at my notes from this book called, excuse my language, Unfuck Yourself by Gary John Bishop. And I mean, I took notes from that book and a lot of the other books that I was reading during that time. I did a lot of reading, especially during from like March to May. And uh, he's talking about like choices and choosing what it is that you're willing to like go through. So being a college basketball player comes with certain perks. It comes with certain not so great things. Being a master student who doesn't play basketball comes with certain perks. It comes with, you know, some other things that you, you may not like. So whatever you're not changing, you're choosing. So from May to, so from March to May, it was about, well, what am I choosing? And when Joni came, it was like, I'm choosing I'm choosing basketball. I'm choosing Joni because I, I, she recruited me five years ago, and maybe I should have gone to Georgia five years ago. And you know, I, I obviously didn't, and I can't go back in time and change that. But I mean, I, I wanted. I felt like it felt like um, divine intervention. Like, oh my gosh, what are the chances that Joni Taylor and her staff end up here at Texas A&M, Aggieland, my home, my home for the last three years? Like, there's no way. And I, at that point in May, I was writing down my goals because I'm a goal, I'm a goal person. I need goals. If I don't have goals, I don't know how I existed without them, to be perfectly honest with you. But that's just me. It's not for everybody. I get that, but I think it should be either way. So I do this list of 300 and it's from Steve Harvey. You can actually um, look it up. It's, it's a video. I can't remember the name of the video right now, but he talks about kind of pushing yourself to identify 300 things you want. It could be short-term goals, it could be long-term goals, it could be material items, characteristics, whatever it is that you want, write it down. And he's like, your mind usually locks up at about like 75, you know, give or take. So I heard this, not from him, but from a, a boy, he's like a photographer, he's, he's pretty cool. But um, he was talking about how he did it and he said that the principle is, or the, the, the thought is that you will have crossed off at least 10%. So if you write 300, you'll probably have done 30 of them. And so I was sitting down looking at my list. I was looking at the list that I wrote in May of 2021. And I, I added and I kind of changed because I repeated some, but either way, May was my, my benchmark. So I'm revisiting a year later and I'm looking, I'm looking down my list and I'm like, I maybe hit 10, if that, <laughs> 10. So I'm like, okay, well, what are the, what is the nature? What are the nature of these goals? Like what, what does it look like? What, are, what am I actually wanting? And a lot of it had to do with being a full-time creative in the sense of like, I've written for X, Y, Z platforms or I've done this, this, this with a problem in New York Tough or 
um, I've designed this or I've you know, gotten a sewing machine or it's all pretty much aligned with this idea of me being a creative. Mind you, I was still very much a full-time basketball player at this point, but I was being honest with myself about the things that I wanted and the heights that I wanted to reach and the things that I wanted to spend my time on. And then I'm writing this list because the idea too is that you know if you are to hit 10% bare minimum, right? 10% of your 300, you carry those other, that other 90%, if you know, if it's still the same, to the next year. And then you kind of just keep recycling. And as you hit, you cross off, boom, think of something new, blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm writing this new list and I'm like, these things still stand for the most part. Like the things that were on that initial list still stood for me, still felt like something for me. It still felt like, yes, please, that, I want that, those things. But what really stood out to me was that it's not that I've reached the, the pinnacle of success in college basketball, like not at all. I've had some really cool moments, like being number one on Sports Center. come on, that wasn't even on the list, but that's, that's incredible. People, you know, even the best of people sometimes don't get to that point, but I did and that was, you know, again, incredible. So, but I'm looking at like, okay, could, I could say first team all SEC, I could say, um, score 40 i could say lead the country in assists like i could i could say all these things but I'm, I'm going down this list i'm like that doesn't make me feel anything it's like it's, it sounds good a lot of times people do things that sound good so i i took a step back for a second i'm like what do you really want honestly like no no outside opinions no could be should be's ideals or no 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 all ideals. Like, what did, What do you want? If you could have it all right now, what What would you be doing? How would you go? What, what do your days look like? What are you going to sleep at night thinking? What are you waking up in the mor morning thinking? What time are you waking up in the morning? Whose schedule are you on? Who's creating your schedule? Like, all this stuff is going through my head. And I'm like, hmm. So I didn't say it, but I felt like in that moment, a green light had gone off or something switched. But either way, I still I still prolong because this is not a this is not a fluff decision. This is not, you know, what are you eating for dinner? Like there's no you say, you know, I'm foregoing my eligibility. There's no coming back on that. Like this is <laughs> this is full steam ahead. This is, you know, we're going for it. So what really sent me over the top, what really pushed me over that hump, like the top of this, if I'm thinking about it, like I'm a visual person. So think about this mountain being right at the the peak or almost there and actually taking that step to go down, I was watching church. <laughs> I was, right, cliche, right? All these epiphanies happen in church. And uh, I'm watching the Potter's House, T.D. Jakes, I think he's incredible. And the title of this sermon was Provoked to Purpose. I will never forget it because I left that sermon, or even during, during the, the procession, like, Yes, these last four years, however crazy, however turbulent, distressing, traumatic, <laughs> all the things they've been, they provoked me to purpose. I am now, I can sit here right now in this moment and say that I found my purpose. Now, granted, that may change, that may, you know, it may change. I don't know, I'm 20, I'm about to turn 22, like it's, or, you know, uh, August 22nd, I'm turning 22 years old. I could get to 25 and be like, nope, it's different. It's this, I don't know, 40, it, it doesn't really matter. But as of now, I am passionate. My purpose is to build platforms for people who don't know how to help themselves. And my medium for that is storytelling. This is why this is why we're here. We tell stories. That is what interviews are about, stories that people can learn from, feel something from. Sometimes this is one of my favorite quotes like you don't people won't remember or we don't remember what people say to us and this is a rendition of the quote. We don't remember what people say, but we always remember how people made us feel. So somebody's making you, you know, feel good. They're, they're filling you with positivity. Like you may not remember a word 
a word they said, but you will always look at that person and think, huh, yeah, like I, I'm good around this person. This person makes me feel good about who I am, about what I stand for, about all these things. So either way, storytelling is that that purpose or is my passion, but my purpose is to be a resource for people who need resources, to be like the middleman, to connect people to other people, to connect people, to plug people in, like to plug people into resources, to plug people into other, whether they be people, whether they be programs, whatever it is, but I'm a builder. Like that's what I do. That's what I want to do. All of the things that I'm doing, all of my projects, all involve me building, building and making, again, these platforms, these, these strongholds for people to help themselves, for people who don't know how to help themselves to help themselves. So provoked to purpose, all of the, th and the sermon is great. And you can look it up on YouTube. Like I watch, I'm an e-church goer and I'm not ashamed. That's my thing. I'm too much of a high self monitor to sit in church and cry and, and do all the things that I'd be doing in my house, but it's neither here nor there. But either way, um, that the book, writing my goals, and the provoke to purpose sermon changed everything for me. And then I had some people who knew kind of the crossroads that I found myself at. And they were like, Jordan, like, okay. I didn't, I got fed up. I didn't want to cry about the same things anymore. I didn't want to have the same complaints, the same song and dance. And I'm not saying everything couldn't have gone completely different with Joni, Chelsea, Mosley, Cat, like I'm not saying KG, like I'm not saying any of that. But what I am saying is, for in these four years, I've seen so many things, and I'm not saying I had the worst collegiate experience, but I, for damn sure, did not have the best. And that you know that's okay. Sometimes it might not. Fifth year might have been the, the blow up, but what I did know about myself is that I wasn't being authentic. That I felt like I was betraying myself and the people around me a lot of times because. If I'm gonna stand in your face and say like, I wanna be here, I'd rather not be, you know, doing an interview right now with somebody because that's what gets me up in the morning. I would, I would have been lying and I felt like I was. And when you're out of alignment, it's, it's never a good thing. You're never going to reach your full potential. You might excel. There might be moments where you, you kind of hit your, hit your stride and all of that, but you'll never be full capacity mentally spiritually, emotionally, if you're not aligned with what you're doing. And I stand by that, I stand by that wholeheartedly. So nobody deserved that Jordan. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't myself. I was a lot of times, especially off the court, more myself than not. But when I got on that court, I couldn't, I had like a, like a ceiling. I could never fully, fully be myself. Now injury aside, and um, in the moments that I was, good moments, great moments. And, but it was always such a, a struggle. These last four years have been a struggle, but again, I was provoked to purpose and that made me reframe everything. So no, I didn't choose Georgia when I was a senior in, in high school, but I hate to say this, but I'm grateful for that Notre Dame experience. I'm grateful for the nights when I think I didn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make it to the morning or, you know, all those like really dark moments, the hole that I found myself in my, especially the spring of my sophomore year, like all of that needed to happen for me to come out on the other side and say, I need to build a mental health program for student athletes. That was the other thing I forgot, but I need to do that because I need that. I needed that. So if there's a me in college right now, you need to see, like you need to have this, you need this resource because that is my gift to you, that you are, we are similar in what we are experiencing. So let's try to, let's problem solve, let's figure this out together. So either way, I've, I've made this decision and I'm, I'm so glad that I did because I can finally be the person that I, need to be for the people around me, but more importantly for myself. If I'm good, I can be good to my best friends. I can be good to my family. I can be a good daughter. I can be a good business.
big sister. I can be a good cousin or niece or, you know, all those things. So that to me was, is priceless. Um, but I'm also just so blessed that I can now enjoy my, my blessings rather than feeling like I'm in, you know, like this is not right. I'm not, I'm not feeling it or, you know, it isn't that. So I'm, I'm blessed to say that I was, that I'm making a, that I made a decision and that it's, it's lended itself to some pretty, some pretty incredible things thus far, and you know, on to bigger and better, of course. But at this point, I'm, I'm very happy with, with what I did.